Hello everyone. I've recently acquired a large amount of patches and insignia, so I'll be having a new series of episodes called Patching Together History, where I go over what a patch is, what it means, and the story behind its unit. Today, in preparation for that, I'm going to be going over the basics of patch collecting so you'll know what I'm talking about in the future. So the real important thing for patches is finding out what era they're from, so let's start with a quick look at some World War II patches. During the war, the most common type of patches were the machine embroidered variant, which meant that there was a base material that was covered by thread in different colors to give the patch the image. This right here is a factory defect military district of Washington patch, and it really clearly lets you show what I mean by this. Uh, underneath the green thread, there's a red base. You can see it on the back too, it's in the middle of all the thread. And then the white, gold, and more red thread were, was, uh, you know, like threaded on top of that red base to give the patch the image. One of the rules of thumb is to see whether the back of the patch is threaded with white thread. Patches with white thread are referred to as white backs or snow backs. This first Army Air Force patch is a great example of that. The patch, if the patch is a white back, it's likely to be from the World War II era. If it has a uh, back that is similar to the front, like this 29th Infantry Division patch, see it is the back, very similar to the front, it's likely post-World War II. Now if the patch has plastic backing, it's from the 1990s to the present. Now if your patch is misaligned, a little crooked, or just looks a little wonky, there's a possibility that could be theater made. Theater made patches are patches that are made in an area of operations that the military is fighting in. Usually these are made by hand and can be either official or unofficial insignia. My only example at the moment of a theater made patch is this beautiful theater made Vietnam War 521st River Patrol patch. Really excellent hand -to work. You can really see how someone put a lot of good time into that. So now let's take a look at some post World War II full color patches and their characteristics. The thread of the patch is threaded onto a base that is the same color as the thread itself. The back of the patch is going to look very similar to the front of the patch. Another thing to note is that in 1957 the new Class A dress jacket was adapted that was a darker shade of green so naturally the patches, their borders, they became more of a darker shade of green than the World War II versions. So if you see this like dark green color that means that the patch is post-1957 which really really helps narrows it down. Probably the biggest thing to look at for uh, post-World War II patches is marrowed edge stitching. So it's also called over edge stitching, and you can see it here on this 2nd Infantry Division patch. The stitching, instead of stopping at the edge and then being cut because of the fabric underneath, the stitching actually went, let's see if it'll focus, goes around the edge of the patch, and then it gets stitched off on the other edge of the patch. So if it goes around the edge of the patch, as you can see here, that means that it is like post late 1960s, so it's probably from the 70s or after. Unless it's a very early version of Merrowed Edge where it's more flat and it's a little bit wider. This this one is not one of the early versions, it's more thinner and not as wide. So you can also see the Merrowed Edge version with this 29th Infantry Division patch. You can see how it goes around the side and it's stitched down underneath there. Pre late 1960s, the patches actually had this thing called cut edge, where instead of it being rounded off like the marrowed edge version, it was just sewed into the side. And there's kind of a little bit of an overhang here, you can kind of see. And on the other side, you can see the overhang also. That's because it was sewn onto a base material, and the base material kind of went over a little bit. So if you can't figure out whether your patch is marrow edged or not, most marrowed edge patches have a tail, like this 29th Infantry Division patch, see, has a, a tail, and this isn't cut off because if they cut it off, then the, the marrowing on the edge would unravel. Uh, let's see, we can also try it for this cavalry patch here. Yep, see, there it is, the tail's right there. One way to determine if the patch is a modern make or not is to shine a black light on the patch in the dark. Since World War II patches were made of cotton or rayon, they wouldn't glow like the synthetics used in patches today, so if the patch glows, it's not from the World War II era. We have here 
a Army Air Force patch and a 6th Infantry, Infantry Division patch. Those are both from World War II. And then we have two 82nd Airborne Division patches, and those are from the modern era. Now we're going to turn off the lights. You can see on the Air Force patch how the white stays the same color as it is on the patch, and the thread is not fluorescent. You can see on the back, see it's just white. You can see on 6th Infantry Division patch, the threads don't glow. The white on the back stays the same. But if we move to the 82nd Airborne Division patches, you can see how the edges of the patches here shine. If we flip it over, yep, see? You can see the thread it glows there. If we move over to the other one, it's even worse. Look at that. Look how shiny that is. It's got the fluorescent shine right there. Take a look at the back. Woo! It's like a flashlight. So if you're on eBay or something and you see a patch that says no glow, that means that it has been tested this way and it doesn't have the synthetic threads, which is a good sign if you're purchasing a World War II patch, or what you think is a World War II patch. Many modern people make reproductions of these patches and try to pass them as originals, so you should always ask the seller to do a black light test on it to make sure that it doesn't glow. So as we finish up here today, what we're going to do is we're going to use some of our new skills that we learned to identify what era some of these patches are from. So starting off with this patch here, we immediately notice that it is in a subdued color, which means that it is post, you know, like mid-1960s. Further looking, we see that it's, yep, it's got that tail, it's got the marrowed edge, which means that it's post-late 1960s. We look at the back, confirms our suspicion, there's no white backing, so it is definitely post-World War II. So this patch, its era is probably between the late 1960s up until about late 70s, early 80s. That would be my guess. Alright, so we got a 45th Infantry Division patch. We can see from here that the side is cut edge. Let's look at the back. Yep, look at that snow white. So all these point to the fact that this is indeed a World War II era patch. So this patch right here is a First Army patch. Now you can tell that it's pre-mid-1960s because it doesn't have that marrowed edge, but it has a cut edge as you can see. It's fully machine embroidered like the 45th Infantry Division patch because it is threaded onto one base material, which would be this color here, as you can see from the little bit of an overhang on the side doesn't really have that snow back, which indicates that this is probably post-World War II, but as I said, with the Merit Edge, pre-mid-1960s. Alright, here we got an Air Force patch. Looking at it, full color, very nice. Got that nice cut edge, looking good. Flip it over, look at that, snow backing, really nice. So this patch is most likely of the World War II era, just like the 45th Infantry Division patch. So here we have a 4th Infantry Division patch. Now, looking at it, we can immediately tell that it's subdued, just like the first patch. Now, it has the later Marauder Edge version. So, with the combination of the subdued and the later Marauder Edge version, it's probably from the 70s, because it's definitely post-mid-1960s with the subdued, and with the Marrow Edge, it's definitely post late 1960s. So we're probably looking at late 70s, 80s for this one here. Well, that wraps it up. So thanks for watching. Now you have the basic lingo and methods used by patch collectors. Stay tuned to my channel for more videos. And if you want to see something in particular reviewed, leave a comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you guys next time.